Are you going to gain weight on your GLP-1 medication after losing it? That's what we're going to talk about today. Hi, and welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Megan. I'm a board certified physician in internal medicine, lifestyle medicine, and obesity medicine. And this is really important because I actually prescribe these medications all the time. I actually talk to the patients about their weight all the time. I've helped hundreds of patients lose weight and I'm here to help you too. So if you're confused about your weight, if you have questions about weight medication, and if you want medically based answers to your weight questions, you are in the right place. Today we're going to talk about, are you going to gain weight back after losing it on a GLP-1? So a lot of times people ask me, oh, did this medication stop working? Um, I stopped losing weight and I've made other videos about that because you do reach a new normal on the medication. Everybody does. Your body finds its new normal. You don't lose weight forever. You don't want to lose weight forever. At some point you want to find a new healthy normal. So beyond that is what we're going to talk about today. And that is this question that people are very worried about is like, is this medication going to stop working, like it's going to keep me at this new normal, and then am I going to gain weight again? Is Am I going to develop a tolerance? It's going so well, what's going to happen? Because also that does happen with some medications, people do develop a tolerance or they need higher doses, um, so that can be a concern for people. So basically on a GLP-1 medication, your um, you in general what happens is you lose weight, you lose weight, you lose weight and then your body reaches its new normal level. And that that new normal level is going to, you know, fluctuate like your old normal did, right? It's gonna go up and down a little bit, but it's gonna stay pretty consistently around the same place. And then what a lot of people are worried about, because a lot of people have, um, you know, have a very uh, painful history of dieting and what often happens to people who do a lot of dieting or this kind of yo-yo dieting is they lose weight and then the weight comes back on and sometimes they get they're even um, their BMI is even higher, their weight is even higher than it was before. So they're really really worried that this is they're they're going to that this um, pattern is going to continue. They're going to lose lose lose, they get to that new normal and then they gain again. So I'm going to explain this. So I'm going to talk about this in two ways. First is what I have seen as an obesity medicine doctor that treats hundreds of people with this medication all the time. And the second is what the research shows. So I will say in general, uh, no, that is not really something that you have to worry about. So yes, there are going to be day-to-day -day fluctuations, but they're not gonna be swings like you might have had in the past if you were dieting. So the nice part about these medications is they really work on that, part of how they work is in the brain to adjust that new normal level for you and really keep it there. So yeah, it might go up teeny bit here and there, but you're really gonna, overall the trend is gonna be stable. So sometimes when I'm talking to somebody, they'll come in and say, hey, listen, I've gained like 10 pounds. I've been on this medication for months and now I've gained 10 pounds. Like what's going on? I would say 99% of the time, something has changed with their lifestyle habits and they have forgotten or it just kind of gradually happened. But usually like the vast majority of the time, it's not the medication. Something else has changed. So we do a deep dive into what else has been going on. And usually it's something like, oh, well also I did stop going to the gym. Or it's something like, ah, oh, also it got cold and I actually, I stopped walking. Or you know what? Um, my kids went back to school and then I stopped doing the meal planning that I was doing over the summer. Like that happens all the time and we just forget and then we think that it's some it, like scary general thing that happened or like the meds stopped working or something. It's get really, really, really granular about what were you doing then that you're not doing now. And the vast majority of the time, most of the time, something has changed with your lifestyle. You're not a bad person. Nothing has gone, like, don't blame yourself or don't like judge yourself. 
you're not a bad person, you're a human being, but most of the time that is what's happened. And you just want to be like so honest with yourself because if you know what the problem is, then you know how to fix it. So really approach it from a, a, a perspective of being curious, but not judgmental. Like, okay, this has happened. Now, what's different then that I'm not doing now? What has changed? Because that is usually where the answer is. Secondly, you do wanna make sure that you are strength training. So some of you, you lose the weight and you are like off to the gym, you are building muscle, you're, you're in it to win it, which is awesome. And some of you are like, I'm thinking about doing strength training, but you are not there yet. Well, today is a day. Today is a day. This consider this your cue. Today is a day to start strength training because when you lose weight, um, what happens is you are also losing a small amount of muscle too. And what you really don't want to do is lose muscle. You want to preserve it or even build it because muscle is one of the few ways that we can actually slightly alter our resting metabolic rate or how much fat our body burns essentially. So muscle is really important for increasing that, for increasing what our body does at rest. So muscles like it's like a long-term investment in your body. It's a long-term investment in your resting metabolic rate. It's a long-term investing investment in your bone health, in your cardiovascular health. Like there's so many reasons why it's good to do. But really, if we're thinking about tolerance or worrying about what's happened, are we going to gain weight back, really make sure you're strength training at least twice a week for about 30 minutes. Um, see a trainer if you've never done it before so you have a good idea of what to do, so you don't injure yourself, don't do that. Um, but strength training is really important. So today's the day. Consider this your sign to start. Also, Check in with your doctor. If you've gone through all the lifestyle changes, you're like, nope, didn't find anything, which again, extremely rare, but you've done that, your strength training, um, and you've gained maybe 10 pounds, 12 pounds. Um, check in with your doctor, make sure nothing else has changed. Have your medications changed? Have you gone up or down on any dosages? Have you added anything? Has another doctor added something that your prescribing physician didn't know about? Like you want to go over all these other variables, all these other, you know, obstacles, uh, maybe get some lab work done. That's a really good time to check in with them as well. And now in terms of research, you know, the, this is still a pretty, um, early area of medicine, we're still really at the beginning phases of where this is going to be, which is so exciting, but also it means that we don't have like a gazillion studies in terms of, you know, the long-term effects because these medications have really just been out, uh, especially things like terzepatide for just a few years. So, um, but I will say, I'm going to talk about the surmount Four trial, and I'll leave that info down below. And that was a study, um, a series of studies, a surmount series, looked at the effects of terzepatide on people with um, weight, but weight issues, but not diabetes. And in the surmount four trial, um, they looked at the uh, how well people did for 88 weeks on terzepatide, and they found that 90% of their subjects had maintained at least. 80% of their weight at 88 weeks. So long-term people had really, really maintained the vast majority of the weight that they had lost. And the average, even better, the average had a total body weight loss of 25%, which is more than what we expect normally from terzepatide. So it seems like the longer you take it, your results are going to be the same, if not better. So it's still early days, but studies so far aren't showing that people are developing a tolerance or that they're like bouncing back or it stops working. It is not what I have seen clinically um, and it's not what the research has really shown. Um, and if anything from this study, uh, it's shown that people actually are even doing better the longer that they're on it. So if you're worried about this, go through the list, but most importantly, get so, so 
curious, not judgmental, curious, what's different then that's not happening now and see if you can find anything. Cause usually that is where the, um, that is where the change is, which is fine. Then you know how to fix it. That's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Um, go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you want medically based answers to your weight questions. Uh, I will leave all that info down below uh, in terms of the references. And then if you want to work with me directly, if you are somebody who's thinking like, I want to be on one of these medications, but also I want to do this on my own. And you're kind of going back and forth and back and forth. Um, just schedule a call with me and we will talk about how I can help you with that. So uh, that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for watching and please be well.